Hello, this is Jacob from Digital Fire Media. Today we're going to be showing you the time freeze effect that we used in our video homebound, our video game video. And so, I want to first show you the ending results, and then I'll go in depth and show you exactly how we did it. So here you'll see that um, my friend Anvar has, has been shot in the head. And this muzzle flash has been tracked to the end of the gun. And there's a lot of time remapping and everything, and it, it almost gives the appearance that time is frozen, and the camera is just quickly moving around everything. Uh, so, let's just get into this. Our original footage here, we just play this back. Anvar gets hit in the head, he just sort of moves. The camera is not moving very fast. We're, we slowly move the camera. Um, and the actors are just trying to stay as still as they possibly can. And so we're just moving around them. Nothing too special. And yeah, pretty much, pretty much that's it. So, we're going to take this footage. We're going to put it into a new composition. And what I did, I tried a couple different 3D tracking software programs, but I, I, I found out that just using uh, After Effects itself um, resulted with the best uh, 3D track. So, right click on your footage, track camera. Right here, it's going to uh, track. It's going to analyze your scene, and then it's going to try to solve a camera for it so you can place 3D objects within your scene uh, so you're able to track different points. Right now, it's going to take about one minute, it says. We'll come back to this once it's done. Right now, it's going to solve a camera. After it analyzes the points, it's going to solve it. This should only take about a minute or so. Okay. So you'll see that um, it finished. So we're going to click on the 3D camera tracker in the effects controls. And once you do that, you'll see the little trackers placed everywhere in the scene. If we scrub through our scene, you'll notice that they're tracked to different um, parts in your shot. So uh, let's get started. We're going to start right here where the gun is in um, plain view. We're going to take one of these points that's close to the tip of the gun. It seems like it's tracked fairly well. And we're going to right click, create null in camera. So right here is our null object. And if you notice, it is tracked decently well to that one point. What we might want to do is move it over in 3D space to where it should line up better. There we go. And then we're going to bring over this muzzle flash. We're going to drag it into here. And here it is. Now, it's only a couple, maybe like a half second long. So we're going to right click, we're going to go to time, and we're going to freeze frame. And then we can expand it across the, uh, the time of the timeline. We're going to make that a 3D object, which moves it over here. Um, now that itself, you, you can see it's sort of placed in the 3D world. However, it's not placed where the gun is. So we're going to take our null object. We're going to push P for position. We're going to click on our position. We're going to copy it. Control C. Go over to the muzzle flash. Control V for paste. And right there, you'll notice that it snaps it in a decent position. Now we're going to move it over to the end of the gun, W for rotation, along the Z axis, and that right there gets the basic idea across. Uh, the 3D track isn't perfect, and it's not going to be for most shots. So occasionally you'll notice that when we get to a certain po point in here, it uh, isn't lined up anymore. 
Uh, so what you could do is you can go into your position and you, you could just sort of keyframe it to where it should be lined up along the timeline. And then you doing this, it should look better. And this isn't even that hard, so something just kind of like that. Once it's done, uh, enable motion blur. It'll look a little bit better. Uh, for our video, we actually changed the transfer mode to add, which just gives it a more lit effect. And I actually duplicated this and rotated it this way a couple times uh, just to give it a more 3D look, a more natural look. Uh, the more elements you have there, the more realistic it's going to look. As well as when a muzzle flash goes off, there, there, there should be a little bit of a light effect put a, cast upon the balcony. So for that we duplicated the bottom layer the actual footage control D and we used a the pen tool G we masked out just those certain sections and change that layer to add like that like so you may want to go into the mask settings and feather it a bit and just mess with how much you actually want to show. Uh, adjust the transparency, whatever looks appropriate. Then you'd have to keyframe that um, for all different for each frame, which kind of sucks, but it does get it does, it does give it a pretty good look. And that that pretty much concludes exactly what we did for this. Uh, for the time remapping later, we used Twixter, but that was after we had fully rendered this at this time. And then we sped it up and slowed it down at, uh, after the fact. We shot this at 60 frames per second, so we had some leeway with what we had to, um, with the whole timing and remapping. So I encourage you guys to explore. And yeah, this is what we have so far. And that concludes our tutorial. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Jacob Lewis with Digital Fire Media. Leave any comments below for any tutorials you may want to see in the future. And yeah.